They call it Kisa. We call it crack. And when a cocaine epidemic hits a dirt poor African country, we're all in trouble. Throughout West Africa, cocaine shipments heading towards Europe are seized on an almost daily basis now. The largest recent haul here in Senegal. Britain's serious organized crime agency has identified what it calls the increasing threat to the UK posed by Colombian trafficking groups shipping through West Africa. Other Western intelligence sources admit to having been shocked and blindsided by the sheer scale of the trafficking. The regional head of the United Nations Narcotics Agency says recent seizures are down to luck, not good intelligence. This year we have had already several tons of cocaine seized in West Africa or coming from West Africa. Most of the uh, big drug seizures that we have recorded uh, recently have been the results of mechanical failures. Uh, a boat abandoned on the shore or an airplane who had to make uh, uh, an emergency landing. West Africa is now the Colombian cocaine cartel's back door to Europe, and it's wide open. Oh my goodness. These wow. 50 bales of Colombian cocaine was, found on an abandoned boat off found. the Senegal coast this month. Channel 4 News was told this represents a tiny fraction of a vast tonnage now being shipped northwards from West Africa's drugs nexus further down the coast. It's the worst trafficking problem we've ever encountered on the continent, one European agent told me. In the space of just four days, they seized nearly two and a half tons of pure cocaine here. That's more than 2,000 packets like this. What you see here, a street value of maybe 50 million pounds, and that's just half of it. What they've discovered here, probably just the tip of the iceberg, and they found it not because they were looking for drugs, but because they were looking for people. Senegalese police, funded by Europe's border guards Frontex, found the boat while out looking for illegal migrants. It had developed engine trouble. Its occupants had jumped overboard and swum ashore. They caught them, three Latinos who'd been living in Senegal for more than a year, in raids on two local houses which netted another 50 bales of cocaine. These are the foot soldiers. The two big fish got away. Passport. But the police got their passports and Hollywood-style cocaine cartel paraphernalia. Guns, ammo, night vision sites, SIM cards from mobile networks across West Africa and South America. The passports? All fakes, it turns out. Every one of these men a Colombian. As instructive, where they'd been on them. And one country stamp dominating all these passports pages. Among the passports, an ID card issued by Guinea-Bissau's Interior Ministry, granting one of the Colombians residency in the former Portuguese colony. We got Guinea-Bissau stamps in our own passports and followed the trail to a tiny country of one and a half million people, now branded Africa's first narco state. Its weak government reportedly hostage to a military which drug enforcement agencies fear is on the Colombian drugs baron's payroll. You wouldn't believe it, but this crumbling city, Bissau, is now the capital of a country through which Western intelligence sources say hundreds of millions of pounds worth of pure cocaine transits every month, more than a ton a day. The ruins of the presidential palace, a metaphor for a failing state, after one civil war and two coups in ten years. Amid this decay, the incongruity of flash cars brazenly cruising the streets of the world's fifth poorest country. Within an hour of our arrival, an explosive interview was running on national radio. The voice, that of Mario Sa Gomez, Guinea-Bissau's leading human rights advocate. In the moment,
That broadcast turned Mario Sa Gomez into Guinea-Bissau's most wanted man. An arrest warrant was issued. He was immediately forced to go into hiding. We tracked down his family. He sees the soldiers looking for his son, and he's very worried. He says that uh, Mario Gomez is his, his first son. He is very worried. Eneda Aurelia said there was no one to protect her husband anything. now. Yeah. Police from the Interior the Ministry had already been here three times since the broadcast. Why, why, why is Mario Gomez Sr. interrupts to say they were back. Man is from the police? Are you from the police? No. Can, can, I, can I just ask this man why, why, why he's come here? Uh, why are you looking for Mario Sagomez? Why? He says that he can't explain it. You can't explain? You can't explain. The policeman left, but he doubtless be back. Mario Sagomez had been jailed several times before, his family fearing the worst if they catch him again. He says that he is very worried because uh, he, is, he is sure that uh, if they catch Mario, they will kill him. The Prime Minister acknowledges a trafficking problem, but pleads ignorance of state complicity in what he insists is lack of evidence. He's new in the job, and he appears pretty powerless to act. Mario Sagomez can say what he likes. It bears no relation to the government's ongoing investigation into what's happening. If I'd had a means to find out what's happening, I'd have already taken appropriate measures. For the moment, I don't know anything, and I have no means to find out what's going on. Last month, this man was fired as the head of the judicial police. Orlando da Silva had been well aware of what was going on. Huge cocaine hauls he'd seized, stolen back, he claims, by the army. Two Colombians he'd arrested disappeared, as did all the cocaine. He says he's a death threat and was too frightened to talk on camera. The man behind Orlando da Silva's dismissal is said to be Interior Minister Major Basiro Dabo, although he denies this. He wasn't that keen to talk. He doesn't think Guinea-Bissau's drug trafficking problem is any different to any other countries. He says that uh, it's not a special uh, thing in Guinea-Bissau. He says that drug, drug trafficking, we can see it uh, in a, at any part in this world. He says that they see drug in Spain. They see drug in Portugal. In Cape Verde. The major offered us quite a long list of countries where drugs have indeed been seized. In Guinea-Bissau, though, seized drugs vanish. The major is one of those who was tasked with investigating the mystery of the missing cocaine. The report's been completed, but remains unpublished. Not all the cocaine goes to Europe. Guinea-Bissau is awash with it and it's fueling a crack epidemic among teenagers. There is chronic unemployment here, prospects pretty much zero. Europe's designer drug of choice, enslaving Africans. There's just one drugs rehab center in Guinea-Bissau, run by Pastor Dominguez Tay. He has no government funding. His center houses 65 okay. cocaine addicts. The local crack habit began with a shipwreck two years ago. Scores of 20 kilogram bales washed up near here. Some people thought the white powder was paint. Some thought it was fertilizer. Others started to smoke it. The worst cases are kept behind bars. The pastor was embarrassed by this, but said it was done to stop them running away. It was at their family's request, he added. Eu penso que é um problema muito grave e urgente. 
This is an extremely serious situation. It needs the urgent intervention of the international community in order to tackle the cocaine addiction among young people in Guinea-Bissau. Jose Américo Bubu Nachuchu is the head of the Navy, one of those accused of involvement by Mario Sagomez in his radio broadcast. Multiple Western security sources claim to us that he is the key facilitator for cocaine cartel shipping through Guinea-Bissau. We'd asked if we could accompany him on a drugs patrol. He said he'd try to find a boat. Well, it's taken an entire day to get to this point. I promised to embed with the Navy of the Republic of Guinea-Bissau. The reason for the delay has been the fact that there hasn't been any fuel for the boat. Now, our captain today is going to be none other than the head of the Navy himself, or Le Chef d'Armada, as he's known here. And his armada? Well, that white one over there, that's it. As we clambered over the rusting hulks of dead patrol boats, the Admiral complained there was no way his Navy could give chase to Colombian narco-traffickers with their Miami Vice-style speedboats. We need fast boats too, he said. Allegations have been made to Channel 4 News that the military moves drugs around for the traffickers. We set off on possibly the first narco patrol by the Bissau Navy in years, all laid on for our benefit. Guinea-Bissau has 400 miles of coastline, with rivers and mangroves and 90 islands. Perfect for drugs trafficking, the Admiral told me. I raised Mario Sagomez's accusations from his radio broadcast. But Chef Tomada, the thing is that although you say people make many false statements, some of those accusations are at you directly, that you are involved in the drugs trade. I mean, mm -hmm. military. Mm -hmm. As a military man, I'm not surprised at being accused of drugs trafficking. I was one of those who helped give freedom and democracy to the people of Guinea-Bissau, so now they're free to say whatever they want. You can tell the truth, or you can tell lies about your enemies. As a citizen of Guinea-Bissau, I just sit here waiting for their evidence. Whether today, tomorrow, or in a thousand years' time, I will never be a drugs trafficker. Okay. Later, off camera, the Admiral, jailed once before for allegedly plotting a coup, said those making allegations against the military were inviting another civil war. After dark, we finally got the phone call we were waiting for from the man the Interior Ministry police were after. Mario Sagomez, well aware of the threat to his life, had agreed to meet us in secret. Our route to the rendezvous was circuitous and well planned. Good to meet you. Despite the manhunt, Mario Sagomez was defiant. What I say is true. Uh, everybody knows that in Guinea-Bissau, the power is not with the political leaders, with political people. The power is in the military. You see my situation. I cannot sleep. Well, I cannot stay with my family. In the morning, I have to stay in somewhere. Okay, but you and, for example, they have to have power. People like us to give us a protection. Because what we are doing is uh, it's not just for Guinea-Bissau. The drug who passed from Guinea-Bissau for our border used to go to America, England, and all. You know, this is uh, international is uh, war fighting. You know, then um, we need uh, some protection. We don't need money. We, don't, we need a protection for. Do you, Do you feel you are risking your life? By doing what you've done. Yeah, I know that. I know. I, yeah, I know. I know that my life is on the risk. That's why I have to take care. I know, but uh, if I decide to fight for my country, I have to fight. I have to fight. Tonight, Mario Sagomez remains in hiding. He doesn't trust government okay. assurances that he'd be protected. It's like, it's like this. This is the way life is in the Cocaine Republic, with a powerful line in their pockets as the powerless look on. But this 
is not just an African problem. 